Okay, in this video, we are going to look into building a little utility audio amplifier. So this is a piece of test equipment. And I built this a few years ago and I've used it a lot. I originally used it to monitor communication circuits, four-wire telephone circuits. Then I used it for audio sniffing uh, for radio receivers, for troubleshooting. So you could use it in conjunction with a warbler, like this here, to trace out circuits. Now inside this uh, enclosure is a little audio amplifier. It's based on the LM386IC. So we'll take a small signal, an AC signal, and amplify it enough to drive an 8-ohm speaker. So I have a 9-volt battery inside. And there's a power switch and an internal speaker. And I have two leads. Now you can see the two leads are, are both, both black, so there's no ground. So inside there's actually a transformer, so it's transformer uh, coupled, so it's totally balanced. So it's totally isolated from the amplifier circuit. So now I use this little uh, utility amplifier to monitor audio that I've generated from microcontroller circuits. Okay, this is the data sheet for the LM386 audio amplifier IC. It's an 8-pin DIP package. And this is what I based my circuit on for my little utility audio amplifier. So we can see pin 6 is VCC, so I have 9 volts connected to pin 6. Pin 4 is ground. Now input is fed into pin 3 through a, a pot, a 10k potentiometer, so we have an amplitude control input. And on the output is pin 5, and that feeds a 250 microfarad capacitor in series with the speaker, and that drives the speaker. And we have a little RC filter at the output to filter any high frequency noise. Now the gain of the circuit is 200 because of the capacitor between pins 1 and 8 it's a bypass capacitor, it's bypassing the negative feedback so we're getting a gain of 200. If we take away the capacitor on pins 1 to 8 just leave it open circuit then we'll have a gain of 20. So in my circuit I'm using a gain of 200 because I have a 10 microfarad capacitor on pins 1 and 8. So that's the basic circuit there. I just added on some front end uh, circuitry, my transformer but this is the basic circuit for my little utility amplifier. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my little utility audio amplifier. And you can see it's very similar to the LM386 data sheet. I have a 10 microfarad capacitor across pins 1 and 8 to give me a gain of 200. Now I've added an input transformer, so I have a balanced input. So I have the total isolation between my input signal and my amplifier. Now I've added a 0.68 microfarad blocking capacitor on the input leads. That will block any DC getting into the primary of the transformer. Now the capacitor is not polarized, so it doesn't matter which way the leads are connected to the test point. So the AC signal is coupled into the prim primary and then induced into the secondary. And that signal goes through a 3.3 microfarad capacitor, a blocking capacitor, and then fed across a 10K pot. So that's our amplitude control, our volume control. So that signal is fed into pin 3 that's input of the amplifier. And the amplifier will amplify it by 200 and we'll get a signal output on pin 5 through a 220 microfarad capacitor in series with our speaker and that will drive our speaker. And we have a little high frequency uh, bypass circuit here for stability. It'll, it'll bleed off any uh, high frequency noise. Now on my, on my uh, power supply, my 9 volt power supply, I have two capacitors. Now in the data sheet it doesn't specify this but it's very critical have a 100 microfarad capacitor and a 0.1 microfarad capacitor to decouple uh, the 9 volt power supply to give us some filtering. Otherwise, otherwise you'll get uh, noise and motor boating on the output of your amplifier. Okay, we'll open up the enclosure and we'll have a look inside. We'll take off the screws, take up the front cover. So you can see there's my battery and I built my circuit on a Vero board and there's the LM386 IC and there's my input transformer and there's my uh, DC blocking capacitor 0.68 microfarad and there's the big 220 microfarad capacitor in series with the speaker and there's the rest of the components and there's my there's my pot for my amplitude control, my volume control so everything fits into an enclosure uh, the parts aren't that critical and you just make it fit into whatever enclosure you have and I just glued on the speaker onto the cover and you just close it up, put the four screws in 
and that's your little audio amplifier. Okay, I've connected my audio amplifier up to the GPIO pin on my microcontroller. Now it doesn't matter which lead goes where because the input of the amplifier is balanced. It has a transformer input. So this is my ground lead. And this is the lead connected to the GPIO pin 0 through a 2.2k ohm resistor just so it's not so loud. So now if I type 0 blink on my computer and we get a output. Here's my 1 hertz. If I type 10 hertz 20 hertz, 100 hertz, 1 kilohertz, and I'll shut it off. So you can see my output is 1 hertz resolution that I could generate on my microcontroller. So now I could actually play a scale. So if I type scale, So that was an upscale one octave and then a downscale one octave. So with our little audio amplifier we can monitor our GPIO output of a microcontroller. Okay, the reason why I'm generating audio tones using my microcontroller is I want to generate human interface feedback tones. Now we see this on bank machines. When you go to your bank machine and you press on the keypad to withdraw some money, every time you press on a key you'll get a beep indicating you press the key. So I, when I have an interface, a human interface project, I always want to have feedback tones, especially on a keypad. So I could generate a beep. So this would be a beep. Now there's another one, it's called a bip. So that, that's the one I would use each time I press a key. I would get a little bip. And I could generate a ring to get your attention. Or I could generate uh, a siren for some kind of alarm. Okay, now you know how to build a little utility audio amplifier and use it as a piece of test equipment. So I use it for monitoring the audio output of my microcontroller. And then in my final project, I just use a piezo speaker uh, in my final project. But you can use it for troubleshooting, for, trouble, for testing out audio lines, phone lines, uh, troubleshooting audio circuits. So hope this video gave you some ideas how to build your own little audio amplifier.